Hi, this is Lisa Louise Cook, and in this Genealogy Gems video, you're going to be hearing from my special guest presenter, Gina Philibert Ortega. It's always fun to hear about the websites that other genealogists are using, and Gina is going to share 25 of her favorite. So let's jump right into it with 25 websites for genealogy. All right, so we're done with genealogy websites. We're done with societies. Let's talk about one of my favorite resources, and that's newspaper collections. So number 13. Now, here's the number one thing I'm going to tell you about as we look at these various newspaper websites. Some of them are free. Some of them are subscription-based. And so you're going to want to ask me, what should I subscribe to? And I'm going to tell you, I don't know. And the reason I don't know is because they all have different newspapers. You need to take a look at the newspaper website, see what papers they have for the place and the time period your ancestor lived there. Okay. It's not enough for them to have the newspaper. It needs to be the time period. And you need to be very careful. Because sometimes it'll say Los Angeles Times, 1900 to 1930. And so in your mind, you're thinking, okay, January 1st, 1900 to December 31st, 1930. But in reality, it might be one newspaper in 1900, 10 in 1901, a year in 1902, nothing in 1903. So you need to look and make sure that they do have what you need. Now here on newspapers.com, that can be done by going up to the top where it says papers, and then you can search by a place or a title. Now, as you probably know, newspapers.com is a product of Ancestry. Okay, so what does that mean for us? Well, being a product of Ancestry, that means that when we find things, we can save it to our Ancestry family tree. So that's a big benefit. It also means that if you have a subscription to newspapers.com and Ancestry and you're searching on Ancestry and a newspapers.com uh, resource comes up, you can look at it. Whereas if you don't have a subscription, you can't. So you can use these two websites together in conjunction with each other or separately. So what you will need to do is make sure that you are signing into newspapers.com with your Ancestry uh, login information. If you're having trouble, I suggest that you contact them to make sure that those two things are connected. Now, the other thing about newspapers.com is there are two subscription levels. One is just their general level, but the other is Publishers Extra. And those are extra newspapers, uh, some of them more recent, that uh, you can pay a, a little extra to get access to. Now, it, is, it might be expensive for you. So what I would suggest is, once again, look at papers, see what they have, what you need, and whether it's in Publishers Extra or not. Sometimes they will have a free weekend where they allow you to look at publishers' extra content for free. And so you might want to take advantage of that if you don't want to do the subscription. All right. So let me say one more thing before we move on to the next newspaper site. When we search newspaper sites, uh, they are what we call optical character recognition. So that's how we are able to search, just like digitized books. So that means when we type in a name or a place or whatever, it's going to find it because it is matching those characters. It doesn't know what a first name and a last name is. It's matching characters. So you'll notice on newspapers.com, it says keyword. That's a name. That's an organization. That's a, any kind of word, basically. Now, once you type in a name, let's say John Smith, it's going to encourage you to put quotation marks because that's going to do an exact phrase search. And it's encouraging you to do that because you're more likely to find what you're looking for. However, if your ancestor was uh, in a newspaper article as John P. Smith, it will not find that. 
or J.P. Smith or J. Smith. It will only find John Smith. So while it's a good idea to do that exact phrase search, make sure you do more than one type of search. All right. So here is an article. And uh, in yellow is the name that I put in to search. Now notice that over at the top right, in fact, it's kind of above my head there, there is a green button that says Save to Ancestry. That allows you to save it, that article, to your Ancestry tree. That's why you will want to have be signed in with your Ancestry credentials. All right, so that you can save that strictly to your tree. Now, if you don't have Ancestry, then you can't do that, obviously. You can have a free account on Ancestry uh, that includes trees. So that is a good reason to use this, but only if they have the newspapers you need. Number 14. Genealogy Bank. Now, Genealogy Bank uh, is like newspapers.com in that they have digital newspapers. Now, Genealogy Bank has newspapers from 1690 to the present day. They have various uh, ethnic newspapers and newspapers printed in the U.S. in foreign languages. So, for example, Spanish language newspapers. Uh, they have some Yiddish newspapers. They have African-American newspapers. They have German, uh, Italian newspapers, but everything was printed in the United States. Newspapers.com actually has some US, Canada, and worldwide newspapers. But Genealogy Bank is strictly the United States. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is that Genealogy Bank has more than just digitized newspapers. They have obituaries that are updated every day that are transcribed. So that collection changes daily. They have some historical books that are digitized. They have some censuses. They have some government publications. However, when you do a search, if you just do a general search, the uh, results will be historical newspapers. At the top, once you get your results, you can change that and go beyond the different categories. They also have the Social Security Death Index. Now, you will notice, this is their advanced search. You will notice that unlike newspapers.com, they have first name, middle name, last name. So they don't have just that big giant keyword box. They also allow you to search and to add a date or a date range, keywords that you can include or exclude. The nice thing about that is let's say your ancestral surname is a noun or a verb you could exclude certain keywords so that you don't get results you don't want. So for example, let's say that your ancestor's last name is Mouse. You could exclude anything that has to do with mice, so for example, mice, that you don't want. You could include the word family. So that might help you narrow down those results. You can also add a place. You can add a newspaper title. So you can do all of that. Now, if you want, you can just search by a name. The other thing you can do is let's say you're not searching for a name. Let's say your ancestor was part of the Masons or the Odd Fellows. You could, in that first name box, put that in. I-O-O-F or Odd Fellows. So, just think of that first name box as kind of like a keyword box. Oh, and let me say one other thing. Up at the top, you can uh, look at under browse what newspapers they have, and you can do that by a place or a title. So that's another way. When you're on the website itself, if you scroll all the way down, it has the listing of their various ethnic newspapers as well. All right, number 15. Now, we mentioned this website when we mentioned NGS because that is a member benefit, but this is Newspaper Archive. Newspaper Archive is a newspaper, digitized newspaper website just like newspapers.com or Genealogy Bank. It is worldwide. It isn't just United States newspapers. Once again, you need to go up at the top 
and see what they have that is going to be useful to you. You can subscribe to it, or like I said, if you're part of NGS, you can use their free uh, their member benefit. I don't know if that includes all the newspapers. You would have to play with it. It's something that they just announced, so um, so you could try that. Number 16, let's look at a free website, and that is uh, Library of Congress's Chronicling America. Now, this is free, so it's unlike the other ones we've talked about so far. You go to Chronicling America, it is only U.S. newspapers, and it includes newspapers from 1770 to 1963, so not every newspaper. And for a while, not every place, not every state, but I think now they do. Now, this is going to change depending on when you watch this. You can see at the top it says they're going to a new interface, so uh, they're going to, this is the same interface they've had for many years, so that'll be nice. Now, from this homepage, you can search on a name or other keyword, okay? Uh, I have my arrow at that pink box, but if you go below that big white box, that's where you can search. You can also do an advanced search where you uh, specify a state, for example. Now, if you go to all digitized newspapers, you can see what they have. Now, this website was done in conjunction with other libraries who helped to digitize their content. Over on the pink rectangular button there where it says U.S. Newspaper Directory 1690 to present, this is a newspaper directory that is, some of it's on uh, Chronicling America, but not everything. It's a general directory of American newspapers, but not all newspapers, that uh, libraries have uh, given information that they have this newspaper and how they have it. So it's a good place to look and see what newspapers exist for your ancestors' place and, uh, you know, learn more about that. Now, keep in mind that directory can be searched in a number of ways. There it is. You can search by a state, by a county, by a city. You can search by a time period when it was published. You can enter a keyword. You can also do a language. You can do uh, labor or other type of newspaper. So there's different ways that you can search this. This might be a good place to go if you're not really sure what newspapers were uh, in your ancestors' time and place. But keep in mind, this doesn't have everything. These are responses that some libraries have given to Library of Congress. All right, number 17 is another free newspaper website, and that is Fulton History. Now, there's actually two ways to get to this website. One is Fulton History, the other is Fulton Search. I tried to show you the Fulton Search because I think it's a little easier, but it was not working when I made the screenshot. So we're going to go with this because you can still search on here. Over at the left, you put in your keyword, whether that's your ancestor's name or another keyword. Notice that unlike the other websites, and we didn't talk too much about this, but just take my word for it, there are different ways to search that might enhance your search. So for example, fuzzy searching, which is going to allow you to kind of consider misspellings. Like, I don't know about you, but I have an ancestor whose last name is Peterson. Sometimes it's S-E-N, sometimes it's S-O-N. Fuzziness would allow me to take that into consideration and find those different creative spellings. So there's all kinds of different ways you can um, search on this site. And so I would highly recommend that you look at the help, that you look at the FAQs. And I believe that he also has a Facebook page. I'm not totally sure about that, but you might want to look there as well. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he does. And when the site goes down, he talks about it. This is a one-man show. And he has digitized more newspapers at one point than Chronicling America. He takes the microfilms and he digitizes them. Now, there is a lot of New York newspapers, but there are some newspapers for other areas as well. And the best thing about it is it's, it's free. 
All right, we've really talked about digital collections, but let's talk about a few more digital collections. You know, we talked about newspapers, we talked about Ancestry and Family Search, all of those have digital collections, but I want to focus on a few others that you might find helpful. 